All right, today we're going to be looking at module 7.1, addition and subtraction of complex numbers. Okay, so let me show you uh, what the definition of a complex number is, <clears throat> and then um, we'll kind of start working on some of these problems. So um, a complex number Okay, it's a number of the form A plus B I. Okay, A is the real part, so this is a real number. And then the B I part is the imaginary number. Okay, any number can be written as a complex number. Any number. or I should say any real number. Okay, so for example, if I wrote just the number two, this number is complex. You don't have an imaginary part, but you can very easily make it imaginary by adding or adding an imaginary part by saying zero times i. Okay, so you can just write two or you can write two plus zero i. Zero times anything is going to be zero, so it's the same thing as two. This is equal to two, and both are understood as complex. So just a small uh, tidbit for you. Let's talk about how um, imaginary numbers come about, and then um, we'll start solving some of these problems. So the way we come about with imaginary numbers is because of square roots or radicals. For example, I can do the square root of 4. This is a very common one, probably one of the first ones you learn. The square root of 4 is equal to 2, okay? Or it could be equal to negative 2, okay? Um, what a square root is doing is asking what number did you multiply times itself to get 4? And we can multiply positive 2 times positive 2 and that will give you 4 or you can multiply negative 2 times a negative 2 and you will get 4 so either you can multiply two positives and get a positives or you can multiply two negative numbers and it will still come out positive so therefore you will never have a negative sign under the square root um, when you're only dealing with two terms so sometimes we will see a square root with a negative under it. Okay, This cannot be solved. The calculator will tell you error. So the way uh, mathematicians have tried to solve this or um, the process that we use is once we see a negative under a square root, we say, okay, this is not real. It can't be solved. But we take that negative and we pull it out and then we replace it with the letter I. We say this is imaginary. So I start out doing this. I take that out and I have I times the square root of 4. Okay, so now we can evaluate the square root of 4 because it's no longer negative. So when I evaluate the square root of 4, this becomes 2I. So it's imaginary 2. 2I. Um, some books and um, publishers have changed the way that they write the I. I think they might write the I out front, um, but for a long time it's been written like this, and so this is the method I'm going to continue to use um, unless the system doesn't like it. So in our case here, 
um, problem number one, we have square root of negative 5i. Okay, so our number one. Square root of negative 5i. I'm sorry, not negative 5i. Just square root of negative 5. I'm kind of jumping ahead. So the i is going to come out as imaginary. So I'm going to do this, i. And then I'm going to have square root of 5. Now, the um, square root of 5 does not have a perfect square, okay? So this can be your final answer. As I said, I'm used to writing the i at the back. You do have to be careful. There is a difference. So I can do square root of 5, and notice how that square root bar stops, and then add my i. There is a difference between this, somebody writing the square root of 5 with the i under these are not equal this would not be correct okay so you want to make sure if you put that i at the back that it is not under that square root okay so i'm going to do square root of five and then i'm going to arrow over and then do i now for example had i not arrowed over once i'm under there if i hit i right there see how that square root bar extends and is now over the eye that is not what you want okay so you have to arrow over make sure you're clearly out of the square root and then add that eye there